Hey foodies, welcome to Foodie Friday. You guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Keisha. I am standing next to a pineapple plant because this video is all about pineapples today. But first, I wanted to ask you a favor. If you want to see me continue in this series for Foodie Friday, then please click the like button on the video. And then also, if you can go one step further and sharing this with people that you know that might be interested, it would be such a huge help to my channel and such a huge support to my channel, but also it'll give me an indication as to whether it's something I should keep up doing. So if you're really enjoying these videos, please let me know in the comments as well. I really appreciate you guys. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Over the weekend, I was talking to my father-in-law, or my father-in-love, and he, I told him that I had bought a couple of pineapples that I was just going to cut up in chunks, and I was going to freeze and use, you know, just to eat with breakfast or, or just to snack on, and so um, he said, oh, well, then you can... You know, you can use the skin, the pineapple skin, to make a tea. And it's a good tea. It's healthy for you. And I was like, really? I never heard of that. <laughs> so I came home, and as usual, I did a little research. And sure enough, there's so many benefits to using pineapple skin. And all this time, I've been tossing the skin out. Um, one of the things that I saw and read that um, it does is the skin helps uh, a lot of people use it to make a weight loss tea. Um, there's some enzymes in it that helps out with weight loss and metabolism. And also uh, it helps lower blood pressure. It helps with just so many things and inflammation and it help against inflammation and so there's different ways that you can utilize it so I went out and bought one more pineapple because there was yet another thing that I saw that I could do uh, with pineapple so I'm gonna do this pineapple three ways there's gonna be three drinks um, that's going to come out of this. The first tea that I'm going to make is going to have the turmeric, the cloves, um, lemon, ginger, and honey in it. And that one's more medicinal. And I'm going to um, can it or water bath it, the jars, so I can use it when I need it, as I need it. Um, as a drink or for, like I said, medicinal purposes. I didn't realize that pineapple is high in vitamin C and antioxidants and stuff. So there's a lot of good benefits um, that comes from using the pineapple itself, but also the skin where a lot of stuff is concentrated in. So, and then the second one drink I'm going to make is another tea, but this one is going to have orange and lemon and lavender and I'm gonna use the stevia leaves with that one and um, the third tea that I'm gonna make and I have my juicer back here so I can use my juicer um, to get as much juice out of this as I can so and then the third one that I'm gonna do is tapachi I think that's how you say it <laughs> Anyways, it's a fermented pineapple beverage that, um, or some people call it pineapple beer that um, I want to try. And that's why I have this other container right here um, to put it in. I have my pot right here that I'm going to boil these skins in. And I'm going to have to do them each individually since I'm doing it, you know, with different ingredients and stuff. So, and different sweeteners. 
for the tapache, it's going to be the brown sugar. I'm going to use that in that drink. So we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to get started on getting this stuff put together. And I'll try and bring you along and show you as I go along what I'm doing. Okay, so I washed this pineapple and I am going to cut the very top of this pineapple off, like so. I'm gonna put this to the side. And then I'm gonna cut off the bottom of this pineapple. And I'm gonna put that in my compost. <laughs> And I'm going to go on ahead and start cutting these. Now, I don't know if you guys are like me, but <laughs> I didn't realize that pineapple had seeds. And I have one here on my finger. Pineapple has seeds, you can grow it from seed. And the seeds are just inside the flesh, like you can see there's one right here in my fingertip. And so I didn't realize that. When I saw that, I was like, Oh, okay, I didn't know. <laughs> and I know a lot of people don't like to eat the core, but I don't mind the core. So I leave it on. I eat all of it, the whole thing, including that core. So I'm just gonna put this, cut these in chunks and put it in this plastic baggie here. That way, my husband and I can have it, or my kids and hubby and I can have it when we, um, I like to eat some fruit with breakfast. You guys, this is my very first time making this, so I am hoping for the best. And I'm doing this with you guys. I'm taking a huge risk. I did usually I'll try and do stuff first before showing you guys what I'm doing. <laughs> so now I have my pot, and to this pot I added the pineapple skins and part of the core that uh, was just a little tough that I didn't want. And I'm gonna add to it some of these ginger. And you know, I'm not gonna really be too particular about the ginger because all this that I'm putting in is going to be um, cooked down in the water. So, Ooh. cut that. <laughs> I'm just gonna smash it up a little bit though to get it activated just to get the juices flowing on it so that as it boils all them good juices will come out of it and I'm gonna be straining this later so I'm not really worried about all the different um, skin parts and stuff that's on here. I'm just trying to make sure that it gets nicely um, broken up. And I might just use this, some of this, in my fermented tapache. So I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to put some cloves, a few cloves in it. Not that much cloves. I don't know how much that is. It's not a 
tablespoon, it's probably about half a tablespoon of whole cloves in it. And then I am going to put in a teaspoon worth of, um, of turmeric. So you can see what we have here. And now I'm just going to add water to this. Okay, so there we have it. And I'm just going to give this a nice little stir around. And I'm going to put this on the stove. And I'm going to boil this for a good 30 minutes. So I don't believe that I'll be able to fit the whole... Um, all the skins from the pineapple into this jar I have right here. <clears throat> plus the water, plus the sugar and everything. So I'm going to do a half batch um, of tapache and then uh, see how well that works. If everything fits, then I might go ahead and add more stuff to it and try and do a full batch all at, all together. But here we have some of the pineapple skins. I just went on ahead and cut it since you saw me cut the first pineapple up. And then I'm, I left some of the core and some of the flesh. So this is about a quarter of that pineapple and flesh. Um, and then I have some uh, ginger that I chopped up right here. And then I have some cinnamon, half a cup of brown sugar. And part of the water that I'm going to need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in that first half of the water that I'm going to need for this. And this is filtered water that I have um, that I'm using. And I'm going to pour the brown sugar. Okay, so I got the brown sugar in there. You guys, my camera died. <laughs> I hate when that happens. But anyways, uh, I was saying that I kept getting this brown sugar everywhere. Uh, I was trying not to make a mess with the brown sugar and I end up making a mess anyways. So I'm just stirring right now to make sure that the sugar is mostly dissolved. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put these pineapple skins and chunks in here. Put it all in there. And then I'm gonna pop these ginger chunks in here as well. Okay. And then I'm gonna get the rest of the water added into here. So I put two cups already. I need two and a half more cups. That's another two cups. Okay, so that's not quite full, but I do not want to add the rest, the other part. I'm going to have to hold off and wait and do a secondary batch with the other half of the skins and pineapple chunks that I saved and um, the ginger. So I guess in this batch, I am gonna add a little bit of cinnamon to it. Now some of the recipes that I saw uh, had suggested using a cinnamon stick 
and yeah, I saw some cinnamon sticks today, and they were expensive. <laughs> so I was like, well, I could get them for cheaper at such and such a place. And then I forgot when I went, I grabbed everything else that I needed. And I forgot all about the dang cinnamon stick. So, anyways, there's that. Now, the only, the last thing that I have here is some cheesecloth that I'm going to put over the top here to keep stuff from getting in the top of this. And so I'm going to show you, let me bring you in closer and show you what this is going to look like. So, I have the cheesecloth on top like so. And then I'm just gonna close this over. Now, this needs to be able to breathe, but I need to be able to keep bugs and stuff from getting inside of here. So I'm just gonna attach it like that. As you can see, this cheesecloth can still move, but it is being held down by the little, I don't know if you see it oh, right there, by that little rubber thing. It's just being lightly held down by it. So when I press down, you see there's still, there's still room. It's not tightly closed. And that's important because I guess as this ferments, then it's going to um, let out some gases and stuff. And it needs to be able to breathe. So anyways, you guys, this is only my first attempt, my first time doing this, so we shall see how it turns out. It says give it about three days, set it to the side in a, a dark place for about three days. So I'm going to stick it in my pantry and let it sit there, and I'll check it every day just to make sure. Um... On the videos that I watched, they said that uh, it's going to form like some white bubbles on top. It's going to start bubbling and form white bubbles on top, which is all normal. So, I will update you um, on this um, for this um, in a few days. Stay tuned. So this is what my first tea looks like. Pineapple skin tea looks like after I finish brewing it and boiling it pretty much and letting it sit and steep. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this out, use my strainer and um, strain out all the solid pieces. And then I'm gonna use my juicer to get all the remaining juice and flavors out. Okay, so as you can see, this is how that juice looks that I just poured out of the pot. So what I'm gonna do is, I am going to use my juicer here to juice everything and I'm not gonna do it with you guys on here because I mean it's not super loud but it's loud loud enough I'll show you how everything looks after I finish juicing it so I'm left with this dry pieces of pulp um, ginger and pineapple and lemon and I have two little jars here of some of the pineapple skin tea with turmeric and ginger and lemon and honey I added the honey to it you guys I tasted it and it tastes pretty good it has a really strong flavor but With that little bit of honey in there and that lemon to brighten the taste. It's really good. I could see adding this to some things and having it uh, 
add some some zest, some zing to some drinks like lemonade or something like that. So, or just by itself. I'd probably add a little more water to it and some ice, but it actually tastes really, really good. So, I don't know, I might keep one of the jars for myself and I might give the other jar to my father in love since he was the one who suggested this to me, um, just so that he can try what I made. I'm gonna put some lids on this and I'll probably end up water bathing it and storing it away until I'm ready to use it. Okay, so now it's time for me to make this final pineapple skin tea. As you see, I already cut the pineapple, the skin off, and then I have an orange, a lemon, and some lavender, some dried lavender and some stevia leaves from my garden that I'm hoping to sweeten this up even more with. And those are just the chunks of pineapple that I cut off. I'm gonna put that in the fridge or the freezer for later. I figured I'd do all the cutting and everything ahead of time since I already cut that one for you to see. And then I have my pot here so I'm just gonna put all this stuff in inside the pot. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut up this orange. So that I can get this in the pot as well. And then this lemon. And as you saw, I juiced these afterwards in the last one. So I'm planning on doing that same thing again. And put the pineapple skins in here. And then the stevia leaves, I'm just going to drop them in. I have washed these already. And I washed the pineapple too beforehand. So everything got a good washing. And then this lavender, courtesy of a friend, a gardening friend of mine. Her name is Sue. Sue, if you're watching, thank you so much for the lavender and the lavender syrup that you made for me. And the tea, it was good. So I'm going to put all of this down in there. I'm not using the whole bag. I think I used maybe a third of what was in the bag. I don't want it to be overwhelming with uh, lavender. But, and that's it there. I'm going to add some water to this. And then I'm going to And then I'm going to put this on the stove and let it brew or cook for a good 30 minutes to an hour. What I did with the first one was I just tasted at different intervals. I tasted the tea just to see, you know, how, what the flavor was and how I like the flavor. And the longer I allowed it to boil, um, or the longer I allowed it to cook on the stove, the more flavorful that first tea became. So we're gonna see how long this one takes. I'm gonna get it, bring it to a boil and then I'm gonna let it boil for a good 20 minutes and then I'm gonna turn it down and let it just simmer. So I will come back when it's all done.
I'll show you how I'm gonna process it. So while I'm waiting for the tea to brew over there, I am gonna attempt to show you guys how to get these, turn these into this. This is a pineapple top that I planted last year. And this one did well. I had two others. And I think one died. And the other one I think I gave to my cousin. But I'm going to be growing these because I'm hopeful to have some plants that I can plant in my front yard in the landscaping and hopefully I'll get some pineapple out of that whole deal <laughs> and this one is looking really good it started producing these real long leaves so this one is taking very well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my cutting board back up here and I am gonna cut these tops so that I can get them in some water so I want to get all of the pineapple fleshy part off as much of the fleshy part off as I can and then I'm going to strip this down and start pulling these leaves to expose the um, root part of this. Okay, so I keep cutting until I get to where it looks like that. These brown little things here are the starts or could be the starts to roots. So once I get it down to that, I'm just gonna start peeling away these leaves to expose the stalk of it. Let me see, there we go. About like that, that way you see these little brown um, parts here that are sticking out? Those are starts to roots. So, um, and then I'm gonna, all I'm going to do is sit this in some water. So, I'm going to do that same deal to these other two pineapples. I'm taking this tops off right here because I can put this in with the tea. So I'm going to put this in with the tea and I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these prepared. Okay, so I'm going to put them in this little container. I have all three of them here. I'll turn them around so you can see. All of them are prepped and ready to be um, to put in here and all I'm gonna do is just stick them in this container and then I am going to add a little bit of water down in the bottom I'm not gonna completely fill the container with water I'm just gonna put enough to where it comes up to the green parts that I left on here um, so the water, well, not necessarily up to the green. Let's see. The water, I'll fill it up enough to where it will come up to this part where you can see where I clearly ripped all those leaves off. It'll come up to that point on these guys. And I'll leave it in water. Just make sure I keep filling this with some water periodically as it dries. Um, just keep filling it up with some water so that uh, the roots can grow. And 
That is all. Pretty easy. I think the first two times that I attempted to do this, I didn't. I, w I, I was not successful. It took my third try, and then I was successful with it. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't work if it doesn't work out for you the first few times, just keep trying. I also saved these seeds that I got out of the flesh of the uh, pineapple. So I am going to try for the first time to grow these from seed as well and see how well that turns out. I know that pineapples take a long time to mature the plants take a long time to mature and to begin to flower. So if you do it this way, it, sh it won't take as long. Um, if you do it from seed, it'll take you a few years before you can get any fruit from it before they flower. So I think with doing it this way, I think I remember being told that it would take a year or two so we'll see because this one that I have that is doing so well uh, this one I planted this one last year and it's already um, starting to fill in and stuff so I'm gonna see this is my test <laughs> I'm gonna see how long it's gonna take to before it starts to flower, hopefully next year. So instead of waiting three years or four years for fruit, I think maybe two years when you do it this way. Okay, you guys, so you can see here, this one is the lavender, it's pineapple skins with lavender, dry lavender and orange and lemon and with stevia leaves to make it sweet naturally um, I mean the pineapple was sweet but when I first tasted it after it started to boil after like the first 20 minutes of it it was it was not that sweet but once the stevia leaves boiled through and all their sweetness went through and with that orange, um, it turned out to be pretty sweet. So it looks like a really nice drink. And then look at this. Okay, so you see this big pitcher. That was just what I poured from the pot. But then I got that much more out of it from juicing the remaining fruit that, was, that I had boiled in that water so there's still a lot of juice left so if you have a juicer or a way to squeeze it all out I say go for it uh, I'm gonna get a little cup so we can try this <laughs> I said we but I really meant so I can try this well, I'm gonna take a little bit out of this one Now you can already see the color difference in this one versus the one with the turmeric that I made. Oh yeah, this one's sweeter. Mm. I taste the lavender really, really well. I don't taste the pineapple as much. It's like a hint of pineapple. All in all, that's pretty good, though. With some ice cubes. Now, this, what's in this big picture right here, doesn't have a lot of pulp. It's pretty clear. This one obviously has a lot of pulp, so let's see how this tastes. I wanted to taste this one before mixing them together. Oh. Okay, so with me juicing, 
everything. The flavor of the orange and lemon is really potent. It comes through a lot. You can smell it. You can taste it. Hmm. It's not bad though. It doesn't have a bad taste. It's just you can definitely, you know it's there. Hmm. Wow. Both ways are pretty good with the pulp in it. It gives it more flavor. You've spent and shared some time with me in my kitchen as I made these three different um, pineapple skin teas. One of them being a tapache. Uh, we'll see how that one is going to turn out. And I will update you on that. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried these teas before. If you've tried, if you use the pineapple skins to make tea. Or other uses that you might have for it. Um, let me know that as well in the comments. Thank you. And as always... God bless.